All right, welcome to this math video. It's about graphing characteristics, and I'd like to dedicate this to Clarissa and Christina. Yay, girls. All right, and um, let's see. So we're going to try to interpret these things. X-intercepts, AOS, which is short for axis of symmetry, vertex, min-max, Y-intercept, and so forth. All right, some of these can get a little sticky, especially this domain range, intervals of increase and decrease. So I got a special little friend here to help us, the car with its shadow and then we're going to look at a car with its headlights okay so um let's look at some of the easiest stuff first um here is the formula we're given and if you know we can label these a b and c and the c value is always the y intercept so we can go ahead and label that it's going to be zero five the y intercept is zero for x and I'm putting it in coordinate form. So I'm going to go over here and label it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where this graph crosses the y-intercept. All right. Other than that, um, this is in standard form. So some other things I'd have to know is, uh, I guess, the x-intercepts. How do you find the x-intercepts um, without the graph being there? Well, you'd use the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So I could plug those values in. Now I happen to have a calculator with me and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just use this table feature where I've put in this quadratic function and I've got a list of values here. So I'm just going to kind of work from this. Uh, 1, 0, that's the location. And uh, 2, negative 3. So I'm just getting these off my calculator because I wanted to get a graph up here pretty quick. 3, negative 4. I could have plugged 3 into the equation and found out what y is when I got that, it would be negative 4. 4, negative 3. Now you'll notice that I'm going to start working my way back up. I've got uh, 5, 0, and then 6, 5. And I want you to notice that these points are symmetrical with the points on the other side. Okay, And that brings up this axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is found with the formula x equals negative b over 2a, which you may recognize as just the front end of the quadratic formula and the denominator there. Okay, so it's pretty easy to calculate this. You're just plugging in negative b, so I'm going over here to the uh, the b value was negative 6, so negative, negative 6 over 2 times a, the a value is a 1 when it's not there. It's understood 1, so this Simplifies negative, negative is positive, so this is a positive 6 over 2 or 3. And if you look at it, so the axis of symmetry is the line x equals 3. So I'm putting a dotted line in here just to show you that this is a line of symmetry where one side of this uh, parabola is the same as the other side. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Oops, not doing so good with my pen here. Okay. All right, so um, that dotted line, I like to say the axis of symmetry is where you could fold the paper and both sides would be the exact same on each of that, symmetrical. All right, so the axis of symmetry, the answer is x equals 3, and it comes from the negative b over 2a formula. Or you can visually look at it and see that, hey, at, at x equals 3, that's the equation of that line. That's where one side is exactly the same as the other. All right, the vertex. The vertex is the highest or lowest point, and in this case it's the lowest point because it's a problem that is going up. So it's the lowest point, and all I'm doing is grabbing the coordinates from that. So it's an xy coordinate form. It's positive 3, negative 4 positive 3, negative 4. The one way I could get that is I can use this, notice it's the same as the axis of symmetry for the x value, but if I wanted to mathematically calculate that after I got the negative b over 2a, then I could take that value, 3 that I got, and I could plug it back into this quadratic formula. So 3 squared is 9 minus 6 times 3 is negative 18. So 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 5, so negative 9 plus 5 comes out to negative 4, so that's where that vertex is coming from. Now is that a maximum value or a minimum? It is not a maximum, it's the minimum value, so it's a minimum value, and specifically they're talking about the y value here, the minimum value is negative 4, which brings us to the range. Uh, the range 
is the values, the possible y values in your uh, equation. And I like to go over here, I want to go back to uh, my car, or to my car for the first time, and I want to show you that I'm turned on my headlights so I can see out on the range, okay? Well, when the headlights are on, it's focused here or shining on the y-axis, and is, when I'm dragging this car over the y, uh, I'm sorry, over the parabola, I can see what the range is. It's going down to negative 20, but then it doesn't get any lower than that. Then it starts going up until it goes up to, well, it'll go up further because there's arrows on the end of there, so it goes up to infinity. So from, it'll go as low as negative 20, and that's where we're going to start this interval uh, notation for the range. It goes as low as negative 20, but it goes as high as infinity. So let's take a look at this graph. And if I were running the car over this, I don't have my headlights on this one, but if I were running it over here, it would go as low as negative 4 and as high as positive infinity. So for the range, we're going to say as low as negative 4. We're going to start with the lowest value and end with the highest value. And we're going to put a bracket around negative 4, which means include negative 4, because, it's, uh, because it is part of the line. And we're going to go up to infinity and put a parenthesis around that. That's a concept, uh, not a specific number, so you don't really include infinity, but it's saying it goes up forever. All right, domain. Uh, domain is, uh, well, I've renamed domain. I call it the shadow main. All right, you got that? Shadow main. I guess I should re... Anyway. Uh, that's not an official mathematical term, but if you take my car and you see my shadow now, here's my shadow down here. Whoops, sorry about that. Here's my shadow, and when I run this over the graph, it's showing me the domain, okay? And it goes from, if I could continue to go up on this graph, it would go from negative infinity. So I'm watching the x-axis as I run this over here. It's going from negative infinity to, and then it goes all the way over here to positive infinity. So the domain is not about the y-axis. The domain is about the x-axis. And this one goes from all the way on the left to all the way on the right. And it continues. So it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. In fact, every quadratic function, unless it's in the context of a word problem, that is the domain. All right. Intervals of increase. That helps to show that with the uh, shadow as well. Okay. The interval of uh, increase, okay, where is this thing increasing? Well, here, some people might say, well, because of that arrow, this thing is going up this way. But we're going to read it left to right. That's why I've got the car facing the right-hand side of the graph, because we're going to go from left to right. So actually, I'm going down here. I'm going down until I get to, now here's the tricky part. I'm going down until I get to, well, we're looking at the shadow of this thing. And we're going down until we get over here to the axis of symmetry, or 3. So the interval of decrease is from negative infinity. We were looking at the x-axis until it gets to 3. A lot of people want to say or specify that in terms of the y-axis, but it's not. It's only in terms of the x-axis. So they'll want to say, oh, it goes down to negative 4. But it doesn't. It's, it's on the shadow part. It goes to 3. Then once I get to 3 with my car, watch my shadow, now my shadow moves past 3, but now I'm going up. And as I'm going up, it's going from 3 out to, well, as far as you can go. So it's about the shadow on the interval of increase. And so it went from 3 to positive infinity. And I want you to notice that the interval of increase and decrease, all their cutoff point is the same thing as the axis of symmetry. All right. And the last thing on this, which is kind of obvious, the x-intercepts, it's just where does it cross the x-axis? 1 and 5. Instead of just saying 1 and 5, I need to say 1, 0, an x-y coordinate, and 5, 0. That's the best way to write that. It's a location. So uh, in red here, locations, axis of symmetry is a line. Vertex is a location. Y-intercept is a location. In blue, uh, these are interval notations. Domain, range, interval of increase, interval of decrease. The ones that are working off the x-axis, I'm going to put in yellow here, the x-axis gives us our domain, it gives us our intervals of increase and decrease, and the y-axis is the only one that is based on the, or the range is based on the uh, y-axis. All right, uh, now would be a great time to pause um, this and try this. Now I'm going to modify this equation a little bit. Let's get this started. Um, negative x squared. I'm going to put 0x in here. I don't have to do that, but I just wanted to show you what the 
A, B, and C values are. And uh, let's go ahead and get it graphed and then let you do this. You can pause it after that, or you could pause it now if you want. But I'm going to go to my calculator and just, um, well, I got a couple of things here. I'm going to go get the y intercept. So that's at negative 3. I know that. Okay. And then I am going to uh, put this in my table feature negative x squared. I wish I could show you this, uh, but I can't. Negative x squared minus 3. And then I'm just telling it to give me some values here and here are the values I'm getting. Negative 2, negative 7. So I'm over here at negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, negative 7, negative 1, negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4, and as you might have predicted then this one's going to be over here. So here's my basic graph. And that's not it. Okay, here's my basic graph. And I want you to pause it at this point, see if you can figure out what these values are. So go ahead and pause it, and then I'll start immediately. Okay, the uh, x-intercepts, well, doesn't cross, okay? Uh, doesn't cross. If you were really persistent, you could use the quadratic formula and come up with the imaginary locations, okay? It would have an i in it, uh, but currently these don't cross. The axis of symmetry. Well, that's where you could fold this thing in half, and so it's at this line. It's the y-axis, which is labeled x equals 0. If you want to do this mathematically or algebraically, you would do the formula negative b over 2a, and that comes up to negative 0 divided by 2 times negative 1, and negative 0 is the same thing as 0, so it's 0 divided by negative 2, and if you do that with a calculator, you get 0. So that's where that axis of symmetry is coming from. The vertex is 0, negative 3. It is a location, so I'm going to put it in xy coordinate form. It is a maximum value, uh, and it maxes out at negative 3. There is no minimum value. The y-intercept is, well, there it is, uh, the same as the vertex in this case, 0, negative 3. The domain, as we mentioned, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. We got parentheses around here. It's about running the car over this thing. If it was above, you'd see the shadow, but let's assume the sun is shining below and up here. You'd see it negative infinity to positive. The range is in terms of the y axis. So this thing goes up from negative infinity until it gets to this value up here on the y axis, which is negative 3. So negative 3, I'm going to put a bracket around that because it includes negative 3. The interval of increase. Well, if I went left to right on this thing, I would be going up, 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 up until x was equal to 0. So I'm going from negative infinity until it hits 0. I'm going to include 0. On the interval of decrease, I'm going to just turn around and start going down as soon as I get to 0. So it's from 0 to positive infinity. I hope that helps. Have a good day.